What's going on, Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams. Thank you for joining me in a string of very fun and creative videos that we've been able to do. Uh, we did an update on the Nano Reef very recently. Last week, we caught up a really beautiful pink Ghani. And in this video, we're gonna do an update on this tank and then try to build basically the most impossibly small Nano Reef aquarium. So thanks for joining me on this video and let's get started. In just over a month, we're gonna be having Reef Stock Denver for the first time in two years. We had a great event in 2020, right before our world was turned upside down. Last year, we didn't get a chance to put on our reef aquarium party. Um, so we've been able to put a lot more effort towards this year's show, which is gonna be happening March 5th and 6th here in Denver, Colorado. We're gonna have some awesome speakers, great raffle prizes, lots of manufacturers, and of course, a sprawling coral market. Make sure to go reefstock.show for more information, get tickets, uh, pre buy the shirts, uh, sizes, whatever you want. And uh, now we're gonna jump into this reef tank and uh, tell you how it's doing. So if you didn't catch our live stream, I'll give you a short recap. This is a Ultim Nature Systems uh, 60U aquarium. It's being powered by a canister filter, a, a small one at that. Um, I think it's the Delta 60 canister filter. So not their time, not UNS's smallest, but the second smallest. Um, and then we have this little cheap Amazon light. Uh, it was $50, I think it's 25 watts two channel uh, we have both channels on right now the white and the blue really helps to bring out the colors and um, it's really be just become a showcase for uh, two and then now three different corals that can handle um, this really low key, low energy uh, aquarium environment. Over here on the left, we've got this huge fox coral, Memenzophilia turbida. Um, this thing has not skipped a beat at all. It just looks better than it ever has. Very happy with it. And um, we've gotten a lot of messages from concerned reefers about uh, Scott Anderson of Mile High Reefers. Uh, he's experienced some challenges with his reef tank and we're gonna do everything in our power to get him back on track. He gave me that coral uh, a little bit more than a year ago. So if he doesn't still have a piece of it or if he just wants it back, Scott, it's going straight back to you. I got a lot of frags I'm ready to uh, just kind of rebuild your reef tank when you're ready. Now over here on the right is a big, should be a lot bigger green bubble coral. This guy should be every bit as big, if not bigger than the fox coral. And we've been a little bit perplexed as to why it's not a little bit larger. Either um, the, the tank is too clean because there's nothing producing waste. You know, all these corals are just sucking out all the nutrients or the light is a little bit too bright. That sounds super silly, right? Coming from a 25 watt light. But just before shooting this video, um, in order to just kind of uh, double check our math, we took a PAR measurement and we both guessed, um, Evan guessed uh, 40 micromoles, I guessed 50. And on the bottom, sure enough, it was 40 micromoles, which should be perfect. And then when I lifted it up two inches, we got over a hundred micromoles. That in itself should not be too much light for just about any kind of coral, but perhaps paired with um, a low nutrient condition, maybe that bubble coral literally just wants a little bit more juice. So I actually today started adding um, a little bit of potassium nitrate, I added one ml of uh, solution that we make here. And uh, hopefully that should help enrich the color and get those vesicles um, to be big and outshine that fox coral because it really should be a lot larger. And then finally, uh, about a month after this tank was running, so two weeks ago, I added one of my favorite corals of all time. This is a Lobactus scutaria. Um, it's kind of an oval shaped uh, disc coral in the fungid family, very common coral in Hawaii. This one did not come from Hawaii. Um, and then, you know, depending on the lighting you put it under, it's gonna be like almost a purple coral with green tentacles, right? It's one single polyp. The maintenance so far is we don't test the water, we don't dose the tank, we don't fret about anything. Once a week, we drain the water all the way down and then take water from the system and refill this tank. So it gets like 100% water exchange um, about once a week. It's like, it's like the easiest thing to do, you guys. Um, the one thing I do wish we had for it was a nice um, kind of 
tight fitting lid because that would help to keep the tank just a little bit warmer. So it's running around 74. Pretty sure if we had a lid, we might be able to push that to 75, 76 just by retaining the heat produced by the light, but mostly by the canister filter. I actually made this tank a little bit worse. I added a squid, an old time, old timey squid, the switching current water device or water director. Um, so you can see it right here underneath the tank. And be because this uh, canister filter is um, really not designed to handle any kind of pressure, um, the back pressure on it has really reduced the outflow. It's probably just enough for this tank and just enough to activate the alternating side to side um, water motion. And to be honest, it took me like stupidly long to install that thing just to get it just right coming off both sides and get it, getting it not to leak. So I'm probably going to go back to not having the squid, the SEWD, because um, it just needs a little bit more power. And right now it's, it is switching. The, the current is alternating, but it's just so mild um, these corals, totally fine with it, um, but just not enough to make a huge difference. So like I said, it took me so long to install it that I'm gonna enjoy it sort of as it is for now. Um, but yeah, this tank is really coasting. We're gonna do our best to, um, I don't know, reduce the photo period on the light and or um, all sorts that also start adding a little bit of potassium nitrate to see if we can't get that bubble coral um, to darken up and to puff up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, update on the coral aquarium here uh, uh, with the UNS gear. Now let's turn our attention to the impossibly small Pico reef tank and uh, see what we can do with it. It was about, I don't know, middle of last year, I think at Aquashella that I came across this really awesome, really small, I call it the micro reef ready tank from PNW Customs. And it's just like a miniature version of a full size reef tank. Came in the mail yesterday. So here it is in all its glory. We've got the custom branded reef therapy, therapy sump. This is, this is actually a micro sump. Got a stand and a tank. And I think the total volume is 40 ounces. So a little bit less than a third of a gallon. So I'm just gonna take it apart because we haven't really looked at it real close, but I already see one important change that I mentioned to them when I was there, or at least one addition, and uh, that's gonna really help with the long-term maintenance of the tank. So, this is a cover. This is something I had asked for to help reduce evaporation and keep the heat in. Same kind of uh, challenge that we were talking about over there with the coral aquarium. So, nice, tight-fitting lid. So we have a light over here, and it's, if it looks familiar, you can see it basically is um, made by uh, the case of a battery bank. You can adjust the height a little bit. So we have 16 blues and four whites. Oh, what a cute little Pico Pico tank. Um, will this, yeah, okay, so this rises um, completely off. The return tube and the drain tubes are attached and it looks like it slides out in one direction. So we got our stand, tank over there. Here's the sump. Cool, thank you very much to PNW Customs for including the lid of the sump. All right, so we've got kind of a basic kind of sump cover with a, little, a couple little um, bumps right there to help keep it in place. We've got a USB powered return pump with some silicone tubing. Should be real easy to attach to there. And custom logoed reef therapy. And even like a nice little water level indicator. All right, so I guess you could put a tiny bit of carbon in here, or maybe just like a little bit of biomedia. And then we've got some perforations for the water to go through. Hopefully there won't be too many micro bubbles um, getting through the tank. All right, so we're gonna put it together right quick and just see how this whole thing works. All right, so we've got our USB powered return pump. We're gonna get that put in here. It's got some suction cups so it can stay kind of put. And then just lies in there all nice and neat. Real good, real good. Cute little Pico Pico, impossibly small tank. And then as I drop this down, I wanna make sure to connect with the pump. And there we go. Hopefully that's all we need. All right, gonna put the light back on. I'm gonna raise it to the top level. 
the cleaning tool, and the micro USB cable. Now that we've unpacked the accessory box, let's return to the tank. All right, so we've been tinkering with this tank for a few minutes, uh, just kind of get a, a feel for um, everything that's going on. We've got three power levels. Right now it's set to max. You press it one more time, it'll blink then off, then one, two, three. It is a really, uh, let's just say gentle light source. So we might end up uh, dropping it back down. We're just gonna pour some water in here and very slowly, you know, I, I wanna take the light off for this because we're gonna need to get into it anyway. We're gonna pour just a little bit of water very slowly in here. And the thing is like any kind of coral we need to add, it's gonna be just ever. All right, I'm gonna turn it over here so maybe you can see it drain. And I wanna see the water overflow into this tiny little overflow box. Don't wanna overwhelm the things. We see we got this, the drains at the bottom. And like at, at this scale, the surface tension, you know, it does some work and we got it overflowing here a little bit. So we're gonna fill it up the bare, bare minimum. So we have a little bit of volume left to add whatever corals we're gonna add in here. So we got the pump rolling. I used a little turkey baster to basically like reverse prime the thing and just kind of shove some water in there. So we just had a little air bubble stuck in there, but now that it's primed, it's got water in the cavity, we should be good and we have water flow. You can see the bubbles there um, creating some water movement and I see a little bit. Right, let me see if this rock even fits in here. I don't want to chop it up too much. No! So close, so close. If I jam it, it's gonna, it's gonna scratch the tank. All right, I think there might be a little piece right here I can break off, maybe get it to fit. Oh my Lord, look at that. Tiniest little piece of rock. That ain't bad. Before we continue, I would like to emphasize this is the furthest thing from a beginner aquarium. A beginner aquarium should be like 10 to 20 gallons. And it would be incredibly easy to throw a single piece of coral in there and just kind of call it done. But I feel like that's not rising to the occasion of this aquarium. So we carefully considered a handful of different corals that would fit well in here that we have extras of, you know, in case we do uh, encounter some obstacles. And we ruled out a couple things, right? So uh, Xenia, if it does well, it's just gonna take over. Uh, pipe organ, we have a lot of that. It would be instantly pretty and cover the bottom. Um, but I really want to make this tank almost look like a bonsai miniaturization of a real reef tank, right? The tank we, sh we showed off at the beginning of the video was more of a coral aquarium, which is a few things. This one, I wanna make it look a lot more like an optical illusion. So one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out. So we've uh, kind of looked around and saw a few different corals that would fit well in there. So we ruled out any kind of soft coral like pipe organ or xenia. But I think there's a couple strains of zoanthids that will make a really awesome showcase for this. Like if you're a shroom collector and you just want to put a couple loose shrooms in here and just really keep an eye on them, that would be absolutely dope. Um, so we have a small piece of Cyphastria that's already pre-encrusted onto a tile. Um, I have a couple zoanthid strains I'd like to pop in here just because it's so small, they're just gonna really pop in this aquarium. And then um, we're gonna round it out with some really thin branch monopora, the Hype uh, Manila Spy Monopora Carinata featured in this month's Coral Magazine, and um, a little bit of the Green Goblin Anacropora. And there's spot left, we might throw in one tiny little polyp or two of uh, candy coral. So it, it, I'm going to just kind of build a platform with the towels that we have. Uh, I think when we're done though, I think it's gonna be mostly coral, which is very little rock to see, maybe you know a couple pieces here and there. Um, we'll see you after the time lapse to see how the tank turned out.
Welcome back everyone. We let the tank simmer overnight and let the coral settle in. And uh, this is just such an awesome exercise in miniaturization. We also find ourselves speaking more softly around this tank, like we're gonna spook it and just moving slowly around it. Um, but definitely a few things stood out about the experience of putting these corals in this tank. Um, definitely small tools, like any tweezers that you might have are super useful. You're even using kind of picks to adjust things around because you know, unless you're a very small child, you're just not gonna get your grubby hands in there to move any single thing. Um, we did add a standpipe to the overflow. There was two drains. So we added a standpipe here on this side um, and that kind of forced a uh, continuous siphon uh, on the drain, making it much quieter and also reducing this, the bubble and the salt spray that was happening um, down in here. That was super easy fix, about the same diameter as what's used on the pump. Um, Right now we have the light set to full intensity, but uh, just for the video, you know, so it'll show up. But for maintenance, we're going to start it off on the lowest setting and then maybe work up to the medium setting because these are all really low light corals. And even when we turn the light up to full brightness, notice these uh, meteor shower over here, the Cyphastria, uh, closed up just a little bit. But mostly um, this is going to be a real challenge to clean and service. So we're going to do everything we can to um, minimize what that's going to intake. Um, and the other thing that we did is we uh, glued in just a tiny little piece of plastic right here to raise the water level uh, because every millimeter of this tank is precious. So uh, we're trying to maximize what we can get from this 40 ounce micro reef aquarium. I think one of the biggest things to keep an eye on for a tank like this uh, initially is going to be temperature. You really do not want to keep it in any space. It's going to get too hot or too cold because it just has no buffering capacity with such a small volume. The lids are really going to help to keep in the heat in the winter time, but in the summertime, you're really going to have to keep an eye on it. Along those lines, salinity, if you re rely on evaporation to help cool the tank, uh, you're really going to have to keep an eye on salinity. And um, so for that, we're not going to use a little ATO machine because we actually have a little micro sump. So we're going to try to uh, reach back into the past and assemble some kind of small glug jug. So as the water level uh, goes down, um, it'll be automatically refilled. And we'll use that top off water um, to replenish what little uh, mineral demands are consumed by the corals. So instead of dosing the tank specifically, we'll try to dose the makeup water. So we're gonna try to keep this tank going maybe for about half a year, cause it's gonna be like, it's not gonna be the easiest thing. It's so small, um, the, things will change so quickly. I'm gonna aim for keeping it in some version of this tank for about six months and we'll see how far um, that gets us. For this tank, we'll probably add a couple couple Nastra starfish, um, little biscuit stars, formerly known as Astorinas, and a couple Stomatellas to help keep things clean. We'll wait till a little bit of algae grows. And uh, then we'll keep an eye out for a small ornamental shrimp like a Sexy or a Peterson eye. So I really want to thank PNW Custom for setting along the micro reef tank. If you want to get one yourself, they're about $1.99. This is not the best value you can get in a particular reef tank, but it is a very fun exercise in miniaturization. And one thing that we're noticing is because everything's so small, we can get like the really, really good look at everything because it's so close to the glass. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was really fun to put together. If you have any questions about tiny reef tanks and some of the principles associated with those go ahead and pop those down in the comments below especially the kinds of corals and animals that are going to be best enjoyed in a very small uh, reef tank environment make sure to check out reefstock.show for information about our upcoming event here in denver colorado i really hope to see a bunch of you guys there in real life and we can talk reef until the sun goes down till next time i'm jake adams and we'll catch you guys on another video very soon